the rectus abdominis is a really cool muscle to uh, do dry needling with. Uh, it's implicated in so many pelvic floor dysfunctions. It's also implicated in so many orthopedic dysfunctions. And honestly, it just doesn't get the attention that it deserves. Not only that, uh, you know, rectus abdominis can be a little bit of a dangerous muscle to needle because it's not very thick. Uh, it's fascinating to see kind of how thick it is on ultrasound. And the interesting thing is directly underneath the rectus abdominis is the peritoneum and the small bowel. So uh, it's very, you know, it's a, <laughs> can be risky to needle if you're not doing it the correct way. One of my favorite ways to needle it is with using an ultrasound. Uh, so in this video, we're gonna talk about how we can use ultrasound guided dry needling to needle the rectus abdominis and we'll, we'll demonstrate that as well. You know, with rectus, uh, you can get a lot of weird pain referral patterns. According to ITSA and, and Simons and Wise and Anderson, uh, which are all researched on, on uh, muscle pain referral patterns, some of the pain referral patterns, referred pain and resulting symptoms of rectus abdominis include uh, bilateral symptoms across the upper or the lower back, precordial pain and fullness, and it can also give you symptoms of nausea and vomiting. Not only that, but it can give you urinary urgency and frequency, bladder pain, buttock pain, iliosacral pain, and back pain as well. You can also have pain radiating to the prostate area, you can have pain inside the penis, and you can have pain in the lower abdomen, and you can also have uh, symptoms of overactive detrusor muscle. So there's a lot of things that go on with rectus abdominis, especially in the pelvic floor world. Uh, and even non-pelvic floor therapists can tend to help patients that have these type issues just by addressing rectus abdominis. When we look at the origin of rectus abdominis, it's the crest of the pubis and the pubic tubercle. The front of the pubic symphysis is where it originates as well. It inserts on the pubis, the cartilage of the fifth, sixth, and seventh ribs, and also the xiphoid process. It's integrated by your spinal nerves, T7 through T12. Its action is it flexes the vertebral column, it tenses the abdominal wall, it compresses the abdominal viscera, some of its actions. When you look at this picture here, you can see the on the left side of the image, the rectus and the transverse abdominus is removed. Uh, and then it's obviously the, the rectus is intact on the right side of the image. The external oblique is superficial to the rectus, so you remove the external oblique and then you see the rectus abdominus underneath it. And then when you look at the left side of the image, you can see the uh, peritoneum and the bowel just directly beneath it, which is also fascinating to see on ultrasound, which you'll see in just a minute. When we look at specific precautions, when we're needling the rectus abdominis, uh, the peritoneum, that's a serous membrane that lines the abdominal and the pelvic cavities. The outer layer is the parietal peritoneum, which attaches to the wall of the abdomen and the pelvis. The inner layer is the visceral peritoneum, which forms a lining that covers the internal organs. The descending and the sigmoid colon is a concern when you're needling above the inguinal ligament on the left side of a patient. And then when you see this image on, the, on this right image here, that thing that's highlighted blue, that's the cecum. Uh, and then that's a concern on the right side of the patient. And also the ascending colon is a concern when you're above the inguinal ligament on the right side of the patient. If you look at this, both of these images, the peritoneum is faded in both of these images and you can see the rectus abdominis and then directly underneath the rectus abdominis is that peritoneum. And then all those bowel structures that we're concerned about when we're needling rectus abdominis. Also, uh, when you took a look at the top part, uh, you got the transverse colon. That's a concern because it's deep to the transverse, to the uh, rectus abdominis. The small bowel is a concern because that's deep to the rectus abdominis. When you look at this image on the left side, the uh, external oblique, the rectus abdominis, the internal oblique, and the transverse abdominis is removed again on the left side of this image. And then the par parietal and the visceral peritoneum is removed on the left side of this image as well. And you can just see how close those, those visceral structures are directly underneath the rectus abdominis. And again, that's gonna be fascinating to see uh, on these ultrasound guided videos. First thing we'll look at some basic ultrasound scanning technique for the rectus abdominis. So we start in the midline of the rectus at the linea alba and then we move over uh, laterally to the, the left side of this gentleman's uh, rectus head and then we'll look at the right side of the rectus head. Now you can see it on ultrasound, you can see the clearly see the rectus abdominis, you can clearly see the linea alba in between and then you can see the other side of the rectus abdominis. And then we just kind of scan back and forth and just rock the ultrasound transducer so we can make out a clear image and, and see the layers. Uh, in a second, we'll freeze the frame and then kind of analyze exactly what the layers look like. So here's a frozen frame. So you can see the rectus abdominis on the right side. You can see the space in between the linea alba. Now it'll make a little more sense. You've got the skin, then you got the adipose tissue, the rectus abdominis is in red, the linea alba is in blue, and then the other side of the rectus is on the other side. And then the peritoneum is what's directly underneath the rectus abdominis, which is why it's so important to know your depth when you're needling uh, this particular muscle. Now we're looking at a still image of the opposite side of the rectus abdominis. So again, same, same kind of image, just the other side. You can see the layers now, the skin, the adipose, the rectus abdominis, the linea alba, the rectus abdominis on the other side, and then most importantly, the peritoneum, which is directly underneath the rectus abdominis. 
And here's a still image of kind of the center of the rectus. So you see the linea alba, and now you should start to be able to make these layers out a little bit. So again, the skin's at the top, the adipose, the linea alba is in the middle, both sides of the rectus uh, on each side of the linea alba, and then the peritoneum underneath. So hopefully that makes a little more sense as to what those layers look like. Now we'll see another live scan. So you can see the rectus head, you can see the linea alba in the middle, and then you can see the other side of the rectus. And then directly underneath those two rectus muscles is all that movement. All that movement is the peristalsis of the bowel, that's the peritoneum. Uh, that's why it's so important to be able to know the depth when you're needling this particular muscle. As you all know by now, this demonstration is intended as a resource for previous students and licensed clinicians who can perform dry needling in the practice acting jurisdiction. So, you know, don't do this if you're not supposed to. Don't attempt it without proper licensure and training. When we look at the equipment that we need for ultrasound guided dry needling, you have obviously an ultrasound machine. We're going to use a curvilinear trans transducer. That's also called a curved linear or a, a convex transducer. We use a convex transducer when we need to go a little deeper into the tissue. And then we use a linear transducer when we need to be a little more superficial. So uh, pretty much for abdominal stuff, you're going to use a, a curved linear or a, a convex uh, transducer. You also need something to clean the transducer. You can't, you can't just clean a transducer with alcohol. It's actually bad for the transducer. So you need to use something like a cabbie wipe or a sandy cloth. Obviously, you need alcohol. Obviously, you need gloves because this is going to be a clean procedure. We always use gloves. We always use alcohol. Obviously, you need a needle. Uh, so we have the myotech needles that we're going to use for this particular setup. And you see some sterile uh, lubricating jelly there. Uh, let me tell you what you can't use for ultrasound guided or dry needling. You can't use that bottle of a uh, blue ultrasound gel that's been sitting in your clinic for the past seven years that you've been constantly refilling because those things are flipping nasty. So if you're going to stick a needle through ultrasound gel, obviously the needle is sterile, the skin is cleansed with alcohol, you have to use sterile ultrasound gel. So you can buy sterile ultrasound gel. It's actually pretty expensive though. So one little hack <laughs> that I like to use that I've found is you can use lubricating jelly. Uh, lubricating jelly, which is basically just sterile KY, uh, they use it for you know catheters and, and other things like that in the medical world. Uh, this stuff is sterile, so you can just take a couple packs of lubricating jelly and that works just as well as ultrasound gel, and this is sterile. So you can use this in lieu of paying for really expensive sterile ultrasound gel because again, this stuff is gel, this stuff is sterile, and it is me a medical grade lubricant. Now you see just a quick video of cleansing the ultrasound head before you perform this technique. And then always use gloves, always use an alcohol wipe down. So scrub the skin with alcohol prior to performing it. Uh, and then because we're gonna use ultrasound guided dry needling, we're gonna use sterile ultrasound gel. So I just like to use those little uh, sterile lubricant packs. You can see the position where we found the rectus abdominis on ultrasound. We're gonna use an in-plane needle technique. So we're gonna stick the needle in in plane with the uh, convex transducer there and then we'll see it on the ultrasound screen in just a moment. So now we can see the rectus abdominis head. There's a linea alba in the middle. And now I've identified the rectus abdominis head. I tap my needle in, now you can see that movement. So the movement is the needle piercing into the muscle. You actually just saw that muscle jump. That was a really cool local twitch response that happened when the needle got inside the muscle. Here's a close up and you can see the arrow pointing to how the needle is going inside the muscle. And then you can clearly see that I'm not piercing the bottom of the muscle. Therefore I stay out of the peritoneum. Here's a second view. I'm going to do e-stem on this uh, rectus abdominis, so I put a, a second needle in. Here's another view of that needle going in under ultrasound guidance. You can see the, see the tissue moving. You don't really see the needle. What you see is the movement of the tissue as the needle is piercing it. And I can see that I'm not piercing uh, beneath the rectus uh, head, and therefore I'm not going into the peritoneum. You can see the movement of the needle. Again, you're not looking for the needle. All you're doing is looking for the movement of the needle. This is what happens when you come to our clinic for a uh, clinical rotation. You end up on a YouTube video. So that's future doctor uh, Kevin Sotichin uh, graciously giving his body <laughs> to let us do some uh, ultrasound guided dry needling of his rectus. So here's a picture with e -stim, and you see the muscle jumping with electricity. So with electrical dry needling into the muscle and you can see the, you actually see both sides of the rectus jumping with the electricity, which is really cool.